Okay, throughout these next two videos, we're going to be looking at um, a range of different concepts. So in the first video, we're going to be looking at um, what's meant by the difference between real and nominal income. And then in the second video, we're looking at the difference between what's meant by equity. Sorry, in the first video, we'll also be looking at what's the difference between equity and equality. And then in the second video, we're going to be looking at what's meant by absolute and relative poverty, how we measure relative poverty using the Henderson poverty line, and the impact poverty can have on our both material and non-material. So first things first, nominal income. Nominal income is measuring the number of dollars of income received by an individual over a period of time. So basically, if your nominal income increases, all that really means is you've got a pay rise. If you go from earning $700 per week to $750 per week, your nominal income has increased. It's really just the dollar amount of income you're receiving on a, in a given week. It does not take into account the actual quantity of goods and services that these dollars will purchase. So it doesn't take into account the rate of income all it's measuring is whether your price has increased, your wage, sorry, or income has increased from the previous year. It's measured without looking at the CPI or inflation. Real income, real income is a better measure of our purchasing power. It's equal to a person's nominal income after taking into account inflation or changes in the general level of prices. So what I mean by that is, for example, if someone's nominal income went up by 4% or if a household's nominal income went up by 4%, but average prices went up by 3%, then we would say that person's real income or that family's real income has gone up by 1%. So for your real income to increase, your wage or income needs to increase by a faster rate than the rate of inflation. So if your income increases by 2% and inflation goes up by 4%, then your real income has actually gone down. Real income is a much better measure of our purchasing power and our material living standards because it actually measures whether we can afford to buy more goods and services with the income that we're generating. So real income is income after taking into account inflation. The second thing we're going to look at in this video is the difference between equity and equality. So basically the difference is equity means fairness and equality means everybody getting the same. So if everybody gets the same distribution of income, we would say that's an equal distribution of income, but whether that's a, a fair distribution of income is another thing. So equity is a measure of fairness, equality is a measure of evenness. So for example, if two households had the exact same income, we would say that that was equality. But would we be achieving an equitable distribution of income? Well, not necessarily, because, for example, one family may have greater needs than the other. So one family, for example, may have a family member who has a disability and requires special care, and therefore the same income would not ensure equality, because the second household would actually need access to more goods and services, um, or, or more income, sorry, because they have um, the need to support someone with a disability. So we would argue that even though that's an equal distribution of income, it's perhaps not fair. Another example is if an unskilled and skilled worker receive the same income. So for example, you know, you spend the next 10 years studying to be a surgeon and somebody else is working just in an unskilled profession that they've just gone straight off the, um, straight from school and working in an unskilled profession. It's equal if you're both earning the same amount of income, but it's another thing as to whether that's an equitable distribution of income. Is it fair that the person that studied for 12 years is on the same income as somebody that's just finished school and gone straight into a job? That would be an equal distribution of income. Whether it's an equitable distribution of income is the same thing. It's like if you do an assignment and you know a group assignment and there's five of you and two of you do all the work, you all get the same mark, so you would say you've got an equal mark. But is that an equitable distribution of income? Is it fair that two people are working so much harder than the other three and they're still all getting the same amount of income? So there are policies that help to achieve equality but don't necessarily help to improve equity. So the goal of equity, when we're looking at equity, it has three main components. So an equitable distribution of income is considered to occur when all Australians have sufficient income to purchase goods and services that allows them to have a dignified standard of living, so they can afford to buy enough goods and services that allows them to have a dignified or self-respected standard of living. Basically means we don't have to beg for food, um, we, we can afford clothes and food that allows us to have a dignified or self-respected standard of living. Nobody's living in absolute poverty. What we mean by absolute poverty is nobody can't afford the basic goods and services necessary for survival. Um, and there are no huge inequalities in income and wealth such that the social and economic costs exceed the benefits. So we'll talk about um, later on some of the social and economic costs of inequality, but what it means to have equity is that there's no such high levels of inequality, so high levels of disparity in incomes and wealth, such that the social and economic costs of inequality exceed the benefits. 
some of those social costs may include um, higher crime levels, a class system um, being established throughout the society. So, for example, you know, some examples when you're looking at the difference between equality and equity. For example, is it fair to have? In, is it fair in a land of plenty that some Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islands live in appalling conditions that are on par with those of the third world? Um, is that is that is that fair? Is that equal? Um, well, it's definitely not equal, but is it fair? Or that perhaps there are 900,000 homeless children in Australia, or that the unemployed and the aged often endure low incomes and poverty. Is that achieving equity? Is it is it more equitable for us to give, say, for an example, an, an extra five hundred dollars a week to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders? That would achieve a more equal distribution of income. But would we argue that that is fair? On the other hand, is it fair that the skilled, diligent, well motivated, and those who work long hours are penalised by high progressive income taxes um, because their marginal tax rates are so high? Yes, it makes it more equal. Is it actually fair? Is it fair that people work all their lives? and earn a really high income and have lots of assets and then don't get access to the age pension? That's another question. So most measures designed to improve equity will also help to reduce inequality because some reduction in inequality is necessary for an equitable distribution of income. However, the government doesn't seek to achieve an equal distribution of income. They just want to ensure that they reduce inequality to a level where everyone is avoiding absolute poverty and can achieve a dignified standard of living. They don't expect perfect equality because that has negative impacts on the economy. Thank you.